Today, we are driving the new 2024 Subaru Forester Touring. But of course, before we begin, let me give you a brief tour of this car and then we'll get started. So up front, we have a nice blacked out grille with the Subaru badge in the center. And then we have mostly LED headlights with fog lights. Around the side, we have 18 inch alloy wheels, mirrors that won't be missing auto dimming and power folding. And up top, we do have roof rails that can hold even more than what it could hold before. Coming around back, we have a pretty plain design. And I do like the badging that we have on both sides. We also have mostly incandescent taillights and, and the aluminum panel at the bottom. Now coming to the cargo area, we don't have a ton of space compared to the CRV and RAV4, which is about 10 cubic feet more than this Forester. We do have a cargo cover and little controls to put down the seats from the back. We also have a power outlet, which is helpful when you're tailgating. Now, let's get started with the interior now. So, the Forester has always been a nice vehicle to get in and out of, and that is especially good for seniors. We have a nice door panel with leather and a good amount of storage. And I really like the leather seats that you can get for only $38,000. We have a manually adjusting steering wheel that will be weather wrapped and heated. And we have six ways of power adjusting seats. Now inside, this is a relatively nice place to be and you still have a relatively affordable price at $38,000. Starting it up, you just push your foot on the brake and push the button and you have the gauge clusters with the small digital screen in the center. This is starting to look very dated in late 2023, but what is still looking okay is the two display setup that we have right here. We have completely physical climate controls, and also we have a nice backup camera that is relatively high resolution. I really like this setup and it is very easy to use and some essential information does display up there on the top screen. We have wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto for our main infotainment system and we have an OK speaker system. Now this is relatively easy to use, however it can be a little bit glitchy and slow once in a while, but otherwise it is a nice system to use. We have two stages of heated seats, no ventilated seats, which is a loss. However, I do like that backup camera right there. And if you get the option, you can even have the forward facing camera going on at the same time at the top screen, which I think is super cool. Now up top, as you can see, we don't have quite a panoramic sunroof. However, this is a little bit larger than normal, which is a nice thing to have for this touring model. And now let's go ahead and check out the second row before we get this out on a drive. The second row has always been a great place to spend time on long road trips if you can't get shotgun, and that still continues. We have two stages of heated seats, a double seat back pocket on both sides, which is a great feature to have, and you have a ton of legroom and headroom. So the sacrifice you make in the trunk space is not that bad after all. You have a little center console with two cup holders and a nicely weather padded armrest and the seat seaters work very nicely. Now let's get started with our driving impressions. I do apologize in advance for the lighting. We are on Eastern time and it is currently not daylight saving so it's going to be pretty dark especially at about 5 30 p.m. Now with acceleration it is not brisk, and I did see a couple comments with you guys saying that is a pretty slow car, and it, indeed it is. We are riding with a 2.5 liter in 9 4 cylinder engine, and it doesn't make a lot of power. 182 horsepower, 176 pound feet of torque, and yeah, we just drove the RAV4 a couple weeks ago. And that was a lot faster. 219 horsepower versus 182 is a lot, and we definitely felt the difference. 
I definitely disliked that the Forester comes with a CVT transmission as standard equipment, which you can only get as the hybrid model on the RAV4. The CVT transmission is not my favorite, and it just makes the car feel that much slower. Now, wind noise is okay. This car is kind of outdated right now. If you look at the 2025 Forester and the competition, the wind noise is kind of creeping in through the windows and definitely the RAV4 is taking the wind right there. This was refreshed roughly about the same time as the RAV4 and Toyota so far is doing a much better job. The windows are not that thick and a lot of tire noise does enter the cabin which is not a nice thing because well their tire selection is just not the best if you can see on top of the top screen there might be a little light to the right yep right there i cannot see that with my naked eye that is to make sure that the driver is watching the road and being safe otherwise it will ding you and say, hey, pay attention. Now, when it comes to the ride quality, Forrester has always been good about that, and that still continues. You might feel a couple bumps if you compare it to other cars, like the RAV4. I will be comparing it to the RAV4 throughout this video because the RAV4 does have a more updated suspension, unlike this Forrester. Now, it's not to say that this is bad because this certainly does a good job of keeping the bumps out. However, it's not going to be like a Ford F-150 Raptor. Now, I did forget to mention that this definitely gets amazing fuel economy. You're looking at around 30 miles per gallon combined, which is great. Of course, you can get the RAV4 Hybrid, which is going to get like 39 miles per gallon, which is absolutely amazing. And this doesn't even offer a hybrid trim level, let me tell you that. But compared to the gas competitors, this will definitely take the win because of that CVT transmission. But it is still a shame that Subaru does not include a hybrid powertrain on this 2024 Forester. That is certainly a loss for people that want to save some money on the gas because those prices are really getting up there. And well, you're probably better off getting a hybrid RAV4 or hybrid CRV if you really want the fuel economy. Now with the transmission evaluation, we had a little acceleration back there. So about that. This has a CVT transmission, so there's not really much to talk about here. It just drones on and on. The nice thing is that it mimics an 8-speed automatic transmission, which means that it will shift up to 8 times. You don't feel it shift because like it's just faking it. But that's still a nice way to take away the feel of the CVT, if that makes sense. The CVT still drones on and on and makes a very unpleasant noise if you're going up a hill and flooring it, but otherwise, the 8-speed mimicking does make it a little bit better. Now, we won't be going on the highway on this test drive route, but in the future, we could possibly be going on the highway. We were in a time crunch, so this was the best way to work that out with the car review which i know is very important to me and very important to you guys now in the dark here we do have automatic high beams and automatic headlights which automatic headlights has been a thing for a long time now and the sensor is not very sensitive but it will turn on if it's dark like especially like this it's not that dark, but it is dark enough that I would definitely recommend headlights. 
and this forester did turn those on we have fog lights included on this touring model and reflectors on all sides of the car and i don't know why i just saw christmas decorations it's not even christmas season yet now we are almost done with this video so i just want to give a special shout out to clayton at subaru of ann arbor who has provided this forester for us he's a super nice guy and really enjoys doing business with customers and definitely is a great person to go to if you need to know everything about a car now be sure to check out the link to this vehicle that is in the description of my in-depth review and if you haven't checked out that video already go ahead and check that out as soon as you can now i will include a little clip of parking this car right now so yes special thanks to them for lending us this car parking the forester is relatively easy this is a small car so it's not like parking a whole suburban but this is a breeze to park especially if you have the option for the 360 degree camera thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time